Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers, 2 to the power square root of 5 and 3 to the power square root of 2, and find out which one is greater. But before we get started with the solution, I would like to thank Dr. Ali Gurel from Alpha Star Academy for his contributions to the solutions of some of my problems, including this one. He's a great problem solver, a great mathematician, and He's got a cool math channel called Cool Math. Make sure to check it out. I'll also share the links down below. Let's get started. So we have two numbers, 2 to the power square root of 5 and 3 to the power square root of 2. So we're going to compare them and find out which one is greater. To be able to do that, we're going to go through several different steps. We're going to be using the binomial theorem. You know, we're going to use powers, uh, exponential rules, so on and so forth. Now, sometimes these kinds of proofs don't make much sense when you look at it. But if you go ahead and play it backwards, it's going to make more sense. So let's get started anyways. So I'm going to start off with 10. And I can write the 10 as 360 divided by 36, right? And obviously, this is less than 361 divided by 36. Now, why am I comparing it to this number? Because this is a perfect square or the square of a fraction. You'll see in a little bit. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, because 361 is 19 squared. So I'm going to go ahead and compare these two numbers, but I'm going to take square roots of both sides. So let's go ahead and do it. That's going to give us square root of 10 is less than the square root of 361 divided by 36 which can be written as 19 over 6, because 361 is 19 squared. Okay, now 19 6 is called a mixed number, which is a weird name, but anyways, we can go ahead and write it as the sum of an integer plus a fraction between 0 and 1. So we can write it as 3 plus 1 over 6, and this is going to be helpful. So let's leave it at that. Now let's go ahead and use the binomial theorem and see where that takes us and then we'll pick up from where we left off. So here's what I'm going to expand. Again, this doesn't make sense if you don't really look at the result and play it backwards. So 1 plus 1 over 8, I'm going to go ahead and raise it to the sixth power. And when we do this, we don't have to expand everything. My goal is to show that this is actually greater than an integer. So let's go ahead and do a couple terms. The first one is 1. The second one is 6 choose 1 multiply by 1 eighth. I can call and put that in parentheses. And then 6 choose 2 multiplied by 1 over 8 squared. So I'm not writing the powers of 1 because that's not needed. I'm only writing the powers of 1 eighth. And then the next one is going to be 6 choose 3 multiply by 1 over 8 to the third power. And then the rest we don't really need. Okay. So let's go ahead and evaluate these values. 6 choose 1 is 6, and choose 1 is always n. Multiply them together, you're going to get 6 over 8. Let's leave it at that. Don't simplify it. And that is going to be added to 6 choose 2, which is 15, multiplied by 1 over 64, which is six, uh, 15 over 64. And finally, this one is going to give us 20 over 512. And the rest, again, we're not going to need. So far, so good, right? Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and combine two of these into two, one thing. So let's go ahead and write it as follows. Uh, if you make a common denominator, multiply this by 8, the top and the bottom, you're going to get 48 over 64 plus 15 over 64. Now, you have a common denominator. Add the numerators. 48 plus 15 is 63 over 64. So my goal is to make uh, sure that uh, I can get an integer larger than 1. 63 over 64 is actually not there yet because it's less than 1. But we're, we'll get there. So I need to add another term. Uh, if I simplify 20 over 512, I can go ahead and divide both of them by 4, which is the greatest common factor. I'm going to get 5 over 128. Again, the rest I'm not going to need. Now let's go ahead and combine these two numbers. That's going to give me the follow, uh, following. Multiply this by 2 and that by 2. 
126 plus 5 is 131 over 128. And yay, this is greater than 1. Which means the sum of this number and 1 is greater than 2. Now, we don't care about the rest of the terms because they're all positive and they're just going to make it larger than 2. Anyways, so now this number is greater than 1. Therefore, the sum is greater than 2. Make sense? Hopefully it does. So I kind of started off with 1 plus 1 over 8 to the 6th power. Let's see where that took us. 1 plus 1 over 8 to the 6th power. Obviously, we know it's greater than 2, but let's go ahead and write it in a different way. Just add them up. You get 9 over 8 to the 6th power. And then you can just distribute the exponent, 9 to the 6 divided by 8 to the 6. And we know now, or we now know that this is greater than 2. Oh, awesome. Let's go ahead and take the 6th root of both sides. That's going to give us 9 over 8 is greater than 2 to the power 1 over 6. You can also write it as the 6th root of 2, but I want to write it this way. Great, so now we have 2 to the power 1 over 6 is less than 9 eighths if we switch sides here. Make sense? Why did I do this? Here's what I'm going to do. Remember we had a different result before, which was this one, right? Square root of 10 is less than 3 plus 1 over 6. Now that's what I'm going to use next. Okay, so 2 to the power 1 over 6 is less than 9 eighths. I can go ahead and multiply both sides by 8 and write the 8 as 2 to the third power. So that's going to give us the following, right? And then I can go ahead and add the exponents because these two numbers have the same base. That's going to give me 2 to the power 3 plus 1 over 6 is less than 9. What do we know? We do know that Square root of 10 is less than, square root of 10 is less than 3 plus 1 over 6. Great. Square root of 10 is less than 3 plus 1 over 6. So how could I use that information? I could go ahead and do 2 to the power of both sides. That's going to mean 2 to the power square root of 10 is less than 2 to the power. Let's go ahead and let me rewrite it here. So we have this, and this implies... Not necessarily implies, but I can use it to write this. 2 to the power square root of 10 is less than 2 to the power 3 plus 1 over 6. And what do you know about 2 to the power 3 plus 1 over 6? You know that it's less than 9. Make sense? Okay, great. So now we have the following chain of inequalities, and this gave us the following. 2 to the power square root of 10 is less than 9. So pretty much we've done everything to get to this point, and this is going to get us the result we're looking for. Now, how do I go from this to 2 to the power square root of 5 and 3 to the power square root of 2? If you look at it very carefully, 2 to the power square root of 10 can be written as 2 to the power square root of 5 to the power square root of 2 because square root of 5 times square root of 2 is square root of 10. And 9 can be written as 3 squared, which is 3 to the power square root of 2 to the power square root of 2, because square root of 2 squared is 2. So, by taking both sides to the power 1 over square root of 2, we get the result. In other words, cancel these out, and you'll get the answer. And, this brings us to the end, but... We're going to look at the numerical values, so you're going to see how close they are. And here's the numerical values. As you can see, they're pretty close. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.